Hey, this is Carla with Discover Your Center, and I wanted to talk today about permission to breathe. Um, permission to breathe. I'm just curious when that said, what does that mean to you? Where do you sense that in your body? What happens when you receive those words? And what parts of you maybe expand or contract? Um, permission to breathe is about taking that pause, taking that breath, but it's more than just the breath. It's really about the space and the, the sensation of coming back into the body. Breath is life. We come into this world and the first thing we do is take our first breath. And the last thing we do when we exit the body is take our last breath. And I am just aware of how um, valuable learning how to breathe um, was for me at a time when life was really, really stressful and how just the simplicity of breath still continues to be such a life-giving tool to me as I navigate other transitions in life right now. And I do that for me so I can be present in my body um, and care for me and nurture me um, and tap into the wisdom within me so I can be present for those around me, my kids, my partner, um, my mom, my family, and clients and the community, my world. And I know it sounds so simple. So often we, we hear that, take a breath, you know, and um, sometimes it can even trigger us like, ah, <laughs> we don't want to hear that, right? Because it's usually, we know like we're contracted and we know that maybe we're just not breathing and we know that we're not being in our body, being ourselves. So I invite you um, to just consider a simple breathing practice um, and doing it from a place of kindness and compassion um, about not trying to get anything right or do anything perfect, but just noticing your breath and giving yourself permission to breathe. So in those moments, um, for me, uh, some of my, my memories of, of beginning to practice with this are um, obviously in yoga, but it was really off the mat is where I needed this practice. It's easier to find breath <laughs> and body um, oneself, myself on the mat. It was, it's always been the challenge of moving that off the mat and into the world and into my relationships and into the places where it really matters. And um, I remember uh, early on, um, parenting was just really challenging. Uh, we grew our family from three to five through adoption. I was really learning about what it means to be a trauma-informed parent. Um, I was feeling so much doubt, doubt and um, I, I, honestly shame, just feeling like I was failing as a parent and everything that I thought I knew um, wasn't enough and everything I was doing didn't feel like enough. And uh, I was working really hard to help um, little bodies in my family um, heal and be well, physically, um, emotionally, spiritually, socially, and um, working on connecting in those relationships as well and keeping the ones um, that had been, had had a great connection connected as well. And it didn't feel easy. And I found myself being really reactive. And one of the reasons that yoga became, um, and, and the its sister tools through Ayurveda became such an integral part of uh, my day-to-day -day living was I knew I craved that connectivity. I knew that I didn't want reactivity. I wanted to be able to respond. And I don't do that even now. Like, I don't do that perfectly. Um, I can find myself in that state of reactivity. But my first tool that I always go to is just a breath, like to really feel like, where am I? And coming back into my body and feeling the breath within my body, expanding it. Because that will always bring me to a space of greater calm and clarity and connection where I can ask a question, where I can receive wisdom, where I know that I may need to ask for help, um, where I um, will not be well, actually, I, I won't say not yelling. Sometimes I still actually yell, but I'm not blaming anyone else for what's going on in that moment. It might be a yell that's just sort of an expression of like, I feel really frustrated right now. 
um, or I, I need a moment, you know, and, and kind of asking for what I need. But I do recall uh, many moments of simply recognizing that I needed something and not knowing what it was. And I literally would lie down on the ground, on the floor in the house or outside, or um, sometimes in the car, I would just feel like I would melt into my chair, into the seat and take a breath and just feel the support as I allowed my breath and my body to soften yet expand. And so I, if you do not already have a breathing practice in place or just a pause, a sacred pause, which I like to ca call it sometimes, I invite you just to explore what that might look like for you, what that might feel like for you. There are so many different ways we can breathe um, and that comes later, uh, but the, the first and, and, and like most valuable thing we can do is just take a breath to be here. And I like to put a hand on my body. It's often my, my heart. Sometimes it's my legs if I'm sitting in the car. Sometimes it's the sides. You can't really see the sides of my body where I can, or the back of my body. Cause I often feel like um, I'm, I'm functioning, you know, in the front and I can move my awareness into the back of my body just by putting a hand back there and sort of feel like, oh, it's almost like supportive in the same sense with that breath. Okay, so there are many ways to do it, but I just wanted to share how um, sometimes we we look for all these things outside of us um, to help find calm, to help find healing, wholeness, and all that is within. And and we that's a, that's not to say that we don't um, that we can't utilize outer outside help. Like I do this all the time, but from a place of inner connection, we can know um, with greater clarity who and what. Um, to ask for and um, so it also helps us show up kinder <laughs> to ourselves and to the people around us so you could even do that now just put a hand on your heart or wherever it wants to go take a breath there's no right or wrong way okay you don't have to breathe in and out through your nose if you know yoga breathing you can exhale through your mouth sometimes that's really nice <sighs> sometimes I end up making a sound like <sighs> like that sigh, whatever you need to do to get there. And I've used this again and again and again. It's one of my most powerful parenting tools and tools that I use when I'm in a, a space of contraction to just soften, expand, and be. I know it sounds simple. Sometimes the simple things are the ones that we find the hardest to actually implement and integrate into our lives. Um, many times there's a story behind that. There's a belief behind that. There's a pattern behind that. Um, we can get curious about that through the breath and through other tools. Um, if you want more of this, you can go to discoveryourcenter.com. I am starting a um, six-week course uh, the second week of March um, 2020, if you're interested. Discoveryourcenter.com. It's called Root, Rise, Thrive. It's a six-week journey. And we will be looking at a lot of embodiment practices. And so learning a bit about these simple yet powerful tools but not just learning, it's going to be very experiential and it's about implementing them and integrating them into your lives in ways that work for you, that don't feel like another should, that never make you feel like you're not doing enough, but actually bringing in that sensation of you are enough, you are inherently worthy, and um, you have a lot within you um, that you get to tap into. So go out into the world, breathe big, be you, and thank you for being here.